Hello everyone, welcome to episode 1 of FTV Neotech. Now, this pack has been very interesting because I didn't know of its existence and it just popped up and it is exactly what I'm looking for in a mod pack. So let's just jump right into it. How about that? So I've gone ahead and just cleared out a little bit of an area right here just to start off. Not a bad area to start the game. We have a beautiful mountainscape in the background and a dead savanna type biome just ahead of us. And we're on these nice rolling bushy hills. In my chest here, I just went ahead and gathered a few things. Some iron from a cave above ground. I made a few tools. I also made this iron hammer here with just five, five raw iron and two sticks. However, after a bit of exploring in the first quest, I realized that it's not very useful to do that, and I'll show you in just a second. So, welcome to Feed the Beast Neotech. Invites you to delve into a limitless world of technological marvels through an uncharted landscapes, mysterious dungeons, and unearthed secrets. Whether you're a seasoned engineer or a novice adventurer, Neotech is your playground to unleash your creativity. So gear up, venture forth, and let the adventure begin. So we get a Time to Leaf, which is Unbreaking, Mending, Vein Mining, Soulbound Axe, which would have come in very handy in what we were doing just now, but I was clearing this all out with a Stone Axe, so not very useful. So, your first obliga uh, obligatory logs, simple as, you get some logs. Here you make your craft table and you get a fuel efficiency book. This is to enchant a furnace, most likely, so fuel efficiency makes sense. Tools of the trade, yeah, go ahead and make all the tools. You get an iron pick, uh, paxel, or all-in-one tool, as it's called, and it's cobbling time, which is an efficiency and fortune stone hammer, it looks like. Yeah, and mining diamond dynamite, that's pretty cool. And then here is why I said you don't need one is because if you make an engineer's hammer, you get an unbreaking three diamond uh, stone hammer or diamond hammer. Sorry. So, yeah, you don't need to make a hammer. They give you one for free. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. But I'm not entirely sure how to make one of these. Oh, it's just strain two pieces of sticks and some iron. And you can get strain from Twisty Rig Underground or Undergarden or just from killing a spider, I assume. And then here, just nap all day. And we need to get towards a map at the start of this. And a map is simply a compass surrounded by paper and iron ingots in front stone dust. Now, an iron ingot isn't simply put put iron in a furnace. No, this is a Greg Tech-esque pack. Not Greg Tech. I know people don't want to call it Greg Tech. It is the mod, if I look at this, Modern Industrialization, which is very similar to Greg Tech. As you see, it's using uh, EU per tick, which is technically industrial craft. It is very inspired by Greg Tech. However, it is to remove all the annoyances and nuisances of Greg Tech, but to keep it very technologically savvy still. As far as I can tell, I've never played with this pack, so it's going to be very interesting to see how it unfolds. Here, it's just telling you to get some sugar cane and a map so you can... Oh, you get the compass automatically. That is cool. Okay, so we just got to get some sugar cane. Now, without a map, that might be a little harder said than done, as I have not spawned by a body of water as far as I can tell. I don't... I haven't seen any water since I started. There might be some on that side of the mountain. I might be remembering differently, but there's a chance there's water on that side. But this thing has vein mining, so it should just break... All of that, maybe? Maybe I have to enable it. Yeah, okay, so it's just the key to enable vein mine as normal candle fruit. Are we on peaceful mode? I haven't seen any mobs. Oh, we're on peaceful mode. Well, that's not very useful. I'll say it's normal, not a big deal. I was gonna say, I'm not gonna be able to get strained if I'm on peaceful mode. And my heart, my hu bleh, my hunger wasn't going down this entire time. And I only just noticed. Well, peaceful. Oh, there's this water just over here. Not too bad. Oh, this is interesting. We have spider web fruit. Which I have to assume makes it strain, maybe? Spiderweb sapling. I wonder if it makes strain. I have to assume this gives strain. But it's not fully grown yet, so we're going to have to find out at a later date, I assume. But that is cool. So if you were to be playing on peaceful mode, maybe the pack is completable on peaceful. I'm not too sure about that, though. Ooh, we have a new ore down here. I think this is probably tin or something. What's this? Ooh, nickel. Okay, I mean, that's probably going to be very useful for us, so we'll grab that. But I still can't seem to find any sugar cane down on the bay. And some wool will be nice. Be able to make ourselves a bed in the future. 
so we can actually sleep at night so now that we're not on peaceful mode oh and there's a village okay yeah this is guarded by a bunch of mobs we probably should have came in daytime but i still don't see any sugarcane on any of the riverbeds which is very unfortunate because well we do kind of want a map to progress but we can grab a bed from here too and you know what i may as well just sleep the night away while i'm at here there's a lot of wooden crates in here if there are the large wooden crates let's see i don't know if it's in here because I know actually additions is added. So is actually additions, do they still have their crates? It doesn't seem like they do. Maybe I'm thinking of a different mod. Yeah, I might be thinking of a different mod because I swore actually additions had the laser nodes and all that. Yeah, because they had the laser wrenches and all that. I swear they had large crates. Maybe it's just not available in this pack yet. But these wooden storage crates are also very useful. They can act as single chests and also be stacked on top of each other all willy-nilly and we actually have ourselves a double village so i'll pop over there and explore as well but i am still on the search for sugarcane and at this current time i don't see any anywhere so unfortunately we might be out here for a while so that village proved pretty useless in finding anything however i did find some food in the chests and i also did find some iron which like i was going over earlier isn't the easiest to get at the start of the game it seems so that's pretty useful i can't deny that however i still cannot find any paper or sugarcane we found some tin and some lead underground those are useful and these guys here are log chickens and we did get a flint chicken egg so these are from the chickens mod which i assume are going to be resource generation chickens never once explored the chickens mod specifically but i've used similar chicken uh resource generation mods so i have to assume it's very similar to those and we do have a blacksmith in this village so that's actually hopeful that we might get something a bit more useful from there i'm gonna throw these wooden storage crates away i sure it's treated wood but it's not like i can recuperate that iron nuggets are probably useful to keep and i probably should honestly just go back and dump my inventory over because well we're gonna be running out of space anytime soon here on my ever-growing search to find sugarcane along the riverbed here if you see the other village, it's just over there. A bit further down the river, we have a large village with a castle and everything. So hopefully this one might yield some better results as to what we are looking for. And we found ourselves a compass. That is actually very useful and an empty map, which is actually what we're supposed to be making. So I will say those are two very useful things. If I look at the map, I assume I will get my... No, it doesn't give me the compass. I assume you actually have to complete the quest to get the unlock, which is unfortunate because at the moment we are locked behind sugarcane, but that is useful nevertheless. We do have that now. However, I might want to head back to my base and actually drop off all these goods because, well, this village is very large, so it's going to be a lot of items to bring back in. Well, currently we don't have the space to do so, and backpacks are tough fabric, which we actually do have access to, so I could go ahead and make one of these because we do have the iron the barrel and the leather to do so you know what we're going to make ourselves a backpack wasn't planning on it but it is literally the perfect opportunity considering we have all the resources we need on us right now so we'll make ourselves a copper we will make ourselves a barrel which is pretty simple we'll make ourselves a backpack nice i assume you might actually get one of these from a quest nope doesn't seem like you do so that's actually very useful we get we went ahead and did this and i don't know if there's any storage upgrades that we can do immediately the copper backpack is simply copper and you don't need an iron backpack or you don't need a copper backpack to do it but we do have enough copper to make one so i'll go ahead and make a copper backpack is that not how it's done oh we need one more copper and then we can make ourselves a copper backpack but for now we do have three slots so i can't complain a little tavern here with a little cash register i'm not sure what mod adds to these villages specifically it might be like a better vanilla plus type mod but they are very very nice i will say but i seem to be ruining ruining their food supply but surely they won't mind of course i find sugar but i can't actually find the cane itself we're really struggling out here a secret stash i see and smokers 
I'm not sure if these are actually hard to make. Let's see. I assume it's the same recipe. Yeah, it is. A guard tower stocked full of food. Very useful, considering I was running out of food earlier. Now, I don't think I'm ever going to run out of food again. However, I don't once again see any sugar cane around any of these parts. So I'm just going to go and explore the entire village and come back once I found maybe some sugar cane or show off what I found in the end. So I went ahead and explored the entire village, found a bunch more things and enough resources to make a larger iron backpack. However, no sugar Sugar cane. So off to the next structure, which seems to be this little pagoda type structure up on this hill. Uh, that's actually mistaken. That looks more like a Western style, like church architecture, actually. But nevertheless, we're going to explore that. I doubt there's any sugar cane in it. But let me just marvel in these mountains real quick. They are so beautiful. I love, I believe this is Terralith, the mod that does this. And man, does it ever look nice. And I am noticing these lines on the ground that we had on our FTB Skies Expert Mode video, if you guys did watch that. There are weird lines on all my textures. It might be Minecraft setting. I'm probably just going to ask someone in the feed of beats discord someone will probably have an answer for me i see so it's one of those old school dungeons with the iron bars at the bottom with the three levels where you get this level the nether level or this level the next level and then the nether level below so we might come back here explore and loot this in the future but currently i'm armorless and that guy has an enchanted bow and i just don't feel like dealing with it right now so we'll head back up to the surface and hopefully find ourselves some sugar cane so we can actually start progressing in this pack now let me tell you when i say i've searched far and wide for this in front of me i've searched far and wide this has been the most elusive block in the entire game i've found a hundred villages i've found a sunken city i found pillager outposts i don't even know where i am but i finally found sugarcane where you might ask well in the frozen taiga biome because that seems to make sense and there's a witch hut over there in a swamp I have been searching for this little green block for so long and i found this pneumatic craft village villager i found like three of them actually i didn't take all of this stuff from every single one but i found an air compressor and omnidirectional hopper display table is not very useful this is really easy to make once you get into pneumatic craft with reinforced stone or stone cutting i don't exactly know it might be with this which is compressed iron and compressed iron is something anyways there's a whole recipe to it but we have a map finally and if i open the map you can actually see how far I've gone and explored. So over here is where we initially spawned on the map. There was, there's probably sugarcane over here now that I think about it, but I didn't like the biome we spawned in, so I did slash RTP. It's available every hour and a half. This is our base. Oh, there's a village right behind the mountains. That's cool. But our base is right here. You can see where I've cleared out the land. I walked this way towards this village, towards this village, towards this village, up and around, followed this entire riverbed, saw more water, followed the water over here, found a village over here, followed this water, started following this water, found this big river here here was following it up here and down like this this is the fisherman village over here here's the sunken city and finally i went ahead and found myself sugarcane i was looking all up here for rivers or little lakes or something but here it is simply sugarcane right here now we have to make the track all the way back over here but it should be easy enough i can set a waypoint say that's home and also there is slash set home if you do read the quests there is slash that home, so I will do that once we get back. I just completely forgot because I was on a mission to find some sugar cane, but we found it. So we're going to head back and actually start progressing through this amazing looking pack. I'll see you guys there. All right, now that we're actually back at our base, only it was like 2,000 blocks away, I've gone ahead and dumped everything from our backpack into these chests. I threw some torches down on the ground. I don't believe, I, I'm pretty sure the lighting works where it's in each light level one to spawn, but I'm pretty sure the F7 mod doesn't understand that or something. I don't know. It's very confusing, but I'm pretty sure it's you only need light level one to spawn mobs anyways let's jump into the quest book and claim everything well we actually have a lot of things we can claim basic chests we're, we're gonna fill our inventory in a second here yeah here we gotta make the engineer's hammer now that we can so i'll grab two sticks and that's spruce planks yeah go ahead and craft that guy and we do have emi in this so if you did see i just clicked shift click on that and it automatically crafted with the stuff in my inventory you don't have to go in and click on here emi one of my favorite like uh versions of too many items not enough items all those kinds right it is probably my favorite by far and now we have an unbreaking three diamond hammer which is super nice and i'll probably take all the enchants off of this guy and throw them onto him 
because, well, this is just a better, well, better uh, tool, but it does have our enchants on it that we'd want. And I might take the enchants off this, the bending least, and throw it on this guy, but we'll see. But we don't, we require a few more things to do that, I assume. Fuel efficiencies for enchanting things. I also did find anvils, which I didn't pick up. I'm not entirely sure why, but I should have picked them up. This increased storage capacity, so it's interesting. There's going to be a lot of things I'm going to be here learning. Uh, slime balls to get bees. Interesting. Ursat's leather. What is this used for? Hand gliders. It said backpacks. Oh, it's to make the backpack upgrades. But it doesn't seem you need Ursat's leather specifically in these. Maybe that's not intended. Because, yeah, you can just use leather or Ursat's leather in these recipes. Maybe, 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 maybe intended. Maybe not. I'm not entirely sure. But it is maybe just another way to get around it. Because instead of having to make leather, you can make it with tough fabric and honeycomb. Not sure. I'm rambling. Make friends with a horse. Observe, observe a horse. Freely aim bows and weapons while riding a horse. That is interesting. Cool. Well, we're probably going to get into that eventually. But at the moment, I don't need a horse. If you haven't noticed, all basic or smoky mechanics have been stabled. In order to start processing ores, you'll need to start with the forge hammer and then move on to special machinery dedicated to doing so, such as the macerator, crushers, enrichment chambers, and more. If you've ever stuck trying to figure out how to press a snore, it's best to refer to EMI. Future Crush should provide you with a bit more detailed, and here's a cookie. Cool, we got a free cookie, and we have to make ourselves a forge hammer. So this guy here is just heavyweighted pressure plates and some iron, and I assume this means for you to go explore, because... Okay, no, the engineer's hammer is used to crush down iron ore. Even though we do have the iron, I will show this off. So if we grab our engineer's hammer, wherever we put it, I assume it's simply this in the recipe. Yeah, so you can use this tiny iron dust to make iron dust. I am not going to go ahead and do that. We've gone ahead and been lucky enough to find all of this stuff in the wild. So we'll make ourselves a forge hammer. And now we have that. All right, so we do want to make iron plates next in our quest book. However, I'm just looking at the recipe here. It says no tool required for a double iron ingot, which is two iron ingots to make a double iron ingot, right? But here, I'm going to actually pin the recipe just because I'm, I'm a little lost as to what's going on here. So iron double ingot will make one iron plate. Two iron ingots will make an iron plate, right? So that's obviously the same recipe, but that requires no tool. But then if you use the tool, I guess you can just get it doubled, which is useful, I guess. So let's see. If we throw an iron ingot on here. Oh, okay. So it's a, it's a, I didn't realize. I thought this was very much similar to the old forge hammer. And oh, I'm not sure what mod it is, but it's included in Project Ozone where you just right click a plate, like you right click the iron on with like the, this in your offhand and you can make stuff. But this just seems to be very simply put like this. So I'm going to use our broken iron hammer here to process this. And yeah, we can go ahead and make. Ooh, iron dust this way as well. So I'm going to go ahead and make iron dust. And then we can make ourselves some plates as well. And then the rings, the bolts, and the rods that we all love from Greg Tech. But this is modern industrialization. There are probably many times I'm going to end up calling this pack Greg Tech or a Greg pack. And I don't mean it. It is very much its own pack, even though modern industrialization is inspired by Greg Tech. But we'll get to that in the future. There are seemingly all the way up to HVA. I assume it seems to be HV, but there are some stuff in here that I don't think are like great tech. Like I, it's going to be really cool to explore. I'm just, I'm really giddy right now. I'm going to be honest. This is just going to be really exciting to play along with clay chicken, some hemp seeds, engineers, XP. Cool. Minecraft music. I love you, but you are too loud at the moment. Let's turn you down a bit. Engineers crafting table. So I assume this is just going to be a crafting table. You can store stuff in and it doesn't really inventory. The next thing in the quest book is to make some kiln bricks, which are really easy to do. It is the same vanilla immersive engineering recipe. It is just bricks and sandstone. And then it also wants us to make a uh, slow coke oven as well. This will make cold coke for us, which will be treated wood and all that, which is are very useful. And we can get into the bronze coke oven as well later and this guy here is actually just smelting bricks so we need a lot of clay and a lot of sand and luckily there are plenty of clay pools i think it's this direction right if i look at my map yeah there was plenty of clay just over here so i'm going to go ahead and collect some clay and sand and then we can start progressing on the tech side of ftb neo tech i'm here going all around looking for my engineer's hammer yet i forgot i have a backpack on me so let's go ahead and make Ooh, don't turn that around go ahead and make these two alloy kilns 
So simply put, you right click. It's just immersive engineering. We have these in our FTB Sky series. We have two of them here now. Now I want to go ahead and make coke bricks as well, but I'm not sure how many I can make. Oh, I only have 16 and you do need 20 to make the quest. So yeah, you do need 20 coke bricks. Once again, it's just re-smelting bricks, so not too big of a deal, but we will have our 20 here shortly. And then we can go ahead and make a coke oven as well. And our tin and copper are finishing up here. And I do believe I have coal in my backpack. So I'm going to go ahead and throw six in here with some coal and tin. And I will go ahead and throw three in there. And this should go ahead and make us bronze and get us into to the bronze age. Now with bronze, we do get a bronze ingot, a wrench and some XP. And it does want us to make the bronze boiler, which is bronze plates, bronze tank, fire clay bricks, which is fire clay dust, which is brick dust, which I assume is forged hammer dust bricks. Okay, so we're going to need a lot of clay and a lot of bricks, it seems, which is good. I have got a lot of clay on me here, but we're going to be needing to smelt a lot of it up. So we'll chuck some more in there and grab some more coal. I do believe I've thrown it all in these furnaces. Yeah. Alrighty, I went ahead and smelted up all of our bronze or copper into bronze, let's say, and we can go ahead and progress into the bronze boiler now. I went ahead and made the fire clay bricks. Well, I made some of them. The rest are up here smelting. I do need five more still to make the bricks. I went ahead and made some glass as well because we'll be needing it. And I went ahead and set up uh, two more things here that we're going to be needing to start progressing so we can actually get steam power. Now that is the bronze boiler to actually produce steam. But to make that work, you either need to put water in it with a solid fuel such as coal or you need to pump it in. So we'll be using the bronze water pump for that. Now this may look like a complicated recipe at first, however it is very very simple. Copper rotors are simply copper bolts, blades, and reins, and if you remember, throw anything in here with the forge hammer, you can get reins, bolts, rods, curved plates, plates, and all of that. So it is much easier than great tech. Rather than needing a hammer, a screwdriver, a file, uh, a wrench, a saw, all of those things, the forge hammer is your friend. So we'll get all of these made in here eventually. That is really cool. Now I I believe, yeah, the compressor will do these things in the future and probably some other machines as well. Yeah, the assembler and such. But for now, this is how we're going to be using it and it, the forge hammer will be your friend early game. You will be needing this guy a lot. But I do like that change as that is probably the most tedious thing about early game Greg Tech is the fact that you need to have 19 different tools in your inventory just to make a single item. But this does cut it down all to a single block and a hammer, which is really nice. But after all the talking is done, our quest here should be done and we can make ourselves a coke oven and I want to get this guy set up immediately because this will allow us to make cold coke which is a better fuel source as well as treated planks I have my hammer on me so I'm gonna go ahead and throw some logs in there I guess I can throw logs eh I'll throw coal I don't have my coal left we'll do coal for now and we do already have some cold coke but this will get us uh treated wood uh what's the oil called I can never remember creosote oil there we go but yeah that'll do that and we can make treated wood planks eventually and it'll get us a fluid tank which will be actually very useful because we'll be able to go collect some water in the bucket mode and we'll be able to collect water and then put that directly into our bronze boiler mechanism does help with that so we'll see we might not need to make the fluid pump just right away but nevertheless we want three clay bricks i do want some bronze plates i believe i need 12 of them so we'll go ahead and make 12 of these guys and i believe that is all we needed oh i do need a little 13 of them my bad i miscounted and then simply if we shift left click this in we'll have this guy oh no we already have that yep what are we missing oh a furnace i was gonna say the recipe should be completing but yeah if we go in here with emi make the furnace and then shift left click that it will pull from this inventory and we got ourselves a bronze boiler keep opening my map while trying to open my quests now what's really nice about this basic blue tank you get from completing the bronze boiler quest is if you hold shift you can scroll between bucket mode on and bucket mode off with your middle mouse wheel button so if we turn bucket mode on we can just simply right click and fill this guy up with water and it's 23,000 there we go that is 32 buckets of water this guy here will simply act as a way for us to not have to worry about filling up our bronze boiler every two seconds with water because well this guy will simply hold 32 buckets rather than a single bucket holding one and you do also get a better one here you get the advanced fluid tank however this does require treated wood planks and we don't have treated wood at the moment yeah I mean we actually could make it with this bucket here but I will grab a bucket and if I grab this we can make ourselves 
treated wood as well, which will give us the advanced tank, but I will just throw the advanced tank inside my thing for now in here, and then this guy will simply collect uh, crease out oil in it as it progresses through like the coal. Anyways, very useful. Now that we have our bronze boiler, we can actually start getting into maceration. Now the maceration is pretty simple. You need a macerator and a furnace to do both, and you also get some pipe configuration cards and such, so we'll do that first. So the bronze macerator is copper gears, some obsidian. Interesting. Okay, it's not flint. So we're going to need to find ourselves some obsidian. Luckily, we do have the diamond discount hammer, discount quarry hammer, so that will be useful in getting obsidian. And then the bronze furnace here is simply the exact same recipe as the bronze boiler, but a furnace instead of a tank. So we'll go ahead and mark both those down. And now we can go ahead and make some more bronze and get ourselves into the bronze age. So if we take the bronze boiler we have and we throw our basic fluid water tank on it, we should be able to with a configurator. I'm not sure if we can actually make a configurator right now. It is osmium. Ooh, it is osmium steel. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to make this work. Oh, no, it, no, it doesn't work. Okay, never mind. I was excited for a second because you can change this to fill empty mode here, but it does not seem to actually input directly into the bronze boiler. However, we don't necessarily need it to, but you always want to make sure with this, see how this, when you hold a wrench, you can set settings. You want to open a steam vent. Maybe? Oh, maybe there's no steam vent needed on a bronze boiler. Curious. I mean, the quest doesn't say you need one. You can pump out steam for the other. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't seem like you need a fence. Interesting. You don't need a vent. Maybe on the macerator you do. Hmm. We'll see. Hopefully not all machines actually work because you normally have to let steam out of them. And I'm not sure why they would remove that specifically, that specific feature from uh, Greg Tech. But nevertheless, interesting. So I've gone ahead and thrown water in here very simply. All you have to do is right click and left click to remove and add or right click and left click to add water. You can also throw this tank right in here and it should automatically fill or you can shift left click it in. There's many ways to get water inside the tank from your basic or sorry inside the boiler frame or tank and then coal just goes in this slot up here. Now this guy here will just be producing steam. It isn't an issue that it produces steam. It won't blow up. The temperature shouldn't blow it up. The steam will just sit in there and then it shouldn't evaporate or anything and then we can pump it out once we're ready to use it. So I'm going to throw three coal in there. Hopefully we'll get some steam. In the meantime what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back on a small mining expedition, grab some copper, more tin, and we can hopefully get some ore maceration going, and then we'll see from there. Okay, a bit of mining later. I have found myself a decent amount of ore here, mostly copper is what I was going for. I went on top of that hill just over there, and I did a strip mine basically, but date straight down. It really does help having this hammer on you. However, I did get a lot of resources. I did end up finding some diamonds, found some bauxite as well, which should just be uh, aluminum, right? Yeah, I eventually make aluminum. However, we're nowhere near aluminum age. I also did find some uranium and redstone as well. And this gold and stuff and the emeralds, I already had in my system. I just kind of threw it all in my backpack so I could have it all nice and organized. Now, this guy over here has his 8,000 bucks of steam. He's roaring to go. So let's get him some stuff so he can start processing with a macerator. And the macerator here, oh, it does require obsidian. There was no naturally spawning obsidian in any of the caves, but it should be a simple fix. This is a weird map glitch. Should be a simple fix is just finding a lava pool spawning above ground somewhere. Yeah, there's one. That's a lava pool right there. So we'll head over to the lava pool if there's unless there's one closer, but I didn't see one. And we will throw some water on it, get some obsidian going, and then we can make our macerator and our other one as well. Okay, here is our bronze boiler. Now, I want to connect our bronze boiler to both our macerator and the furnace we just made by going through all of the copper gears here and making copper gears with bolts, plates, and reins, and we made some copper blades, which was the curved plates. Totally just made all of these things. Don't look at that. That is fake copper dust. So, to go ahead and connect these guys to your machines, all you have to do is place down the pipes you would like to transfer your steam through and 
this case, I want to transfer the steam out of this side. I will go ahead and right click on this end right here to connect it directly to my machine. And then I'm going to right click on this arrow right here to make this an output. See the arrows facing this way. It is an output now. And then I can just go ahead and plop down these machines. Now, don't worry. You can go ahead and break these machines with any type of pick or pickaxe. They don't need to be broken with a wrench. In fact, they can't be broken with a wrench. So don't do that. Now, just stick them down on the back and you can simply collect in the middle right here to connect outputs on the end, which makes it really simple. Now, I believe if I go into the macerator itself, I can set an output right here by shift right clicking maybe. I believe I can set an output. Maybe I can't. We'll see. So I'll place it on the blast furnace and if I do auto eject enabled, this guy here should collect items directly. I'm not entirely sure, but this bronze macerator here, if we test it out, will macerate our copper by collecting with the steam that we have from our boiler here, which is still pumping it out. And and yeah, it is automatically outputting. So if you right click the side here, oops, shift right click the side, you get this little output section. And when you click auto eject enabled, this turn turns orange. So we can actually, in fact, throw a chest down right on the end here and have this automatically eject into the chest. So now we go. So that's a very simple process. So you just shift right click the edge you want to set the output on and it'll automatically input to a valid inventory. Master inputs into the furnace, furnace inputs in the chest, no cables needed. Needed. only two little fluid pipes on the edge both of them going in coming out of that side totally legit reenactment this is my first time ever placing down these machines yep Alrighty, everyone we have finished our macerator iron our furnace and we have progressed into the bronze age now that is going to do it for this episode here if you guys did learn anything or if you would like to teach me anything about modern industrialization or this pack in general leave it in the comments down below i read every single one of them if you guys enjoyed this video hit that like button it means a lot and it shows that you guys are enjoying the series and if you don't want to miss any other future uploads hit that subscribe button i hope to see many more episodes episodes in this pack as this is very very interesting as of yet modern industrialization seems like a very interesting mod as it is inspired by one of my favorites Greg Tech so I'm happy to continue playing along with it next episode we'll hopefully progress throughout this quest here maybe get towards the steel age progression but I doubt it as there are a lot of step still ahead of us however I hope you guys did enjoy and I'll see you guys in the next one bye bye